Hi, everyone. Welcome to our EMQX Cloud webinar. I'm happy to have you all. Today, we are going to learn about the benefits of MQTT and how to build a high performance and scalable message broker based IoT platform art and running quickly. Additionally, you will see how data from IoT sensors published to the broker can be automatically processed and routed to other backend systems like circle databases, Kafka, and automatic control mechanisms. Today, our speaker is Kerry Ware, who is EMQ pre-sales engineer. He has strong hardware and software background and worked with customers in a wide range of industries. Before we kick off the webinar, I would like you all to know that we will be recording this session and all participants will be on, on mute by default. But if you have any questions during this webinar, please type them in the Q&A box. At the end of the webinar, there will be a Q&A part. You also can raise your hand at that time to talk with speaker or other guests directly. And the questions in the Q&A box will be answered at that part as well. Finally, we will share the recording of the webinar and slides in the follow-up email. So let's welcome Carrie. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. And today I'm going to show you how you can set up a high performance IoT platform in just a few minutes. So what I'm going to be talking about today is, first of all, I'll start off with uh, the EMQX cloud benefits and features. Then I'll talk about MQTT protocol advantages, then getting started with EMQX cloud and how you can get a trial version. And then I'll also do a demo on EMQX Cloud in an IoT scenario, including processing and streaming data to MySQL and Kafka. And then finally, um, summary and questions and answers. So first, I'll start off with EMQX Cloud benefits and features. So EMQX is a high performance, easy to deploy message broker. It has high capacitancy and low latency. latency. Uh, we've tested it at 10 million connections with uh, about 10 uh, with millions of messages per second and the latency was under 100 milliseconds and with quality of service zero it was under 10 milliseconds it's fast deployment and the setup is just a few clicks it's easy to manage because we do the work for you it's pay as you go so you only pay for what you need it's cloud native and it, so what you have is a fully managed version three and version five MQTT broker service. We support other protocols, including MQTT SN, CoAP, and lightweight M2M. And you can choose from three different plans, standard, professional, and unlimited. And with the standard plan, you have a single node broker that, that allows you up to 10,000 connections. Um, we have a, a support for a rules engine that allows you to uh, forward data to other MQTT brokers. Uh, we have support uh, during business hours. Uh, the plan I'm going to be talking about today is a professional plan where you have a multi cloud <clears throat> multi node cluster with up to 10,000 connections. We have a rule engine that su also supports. Uh, besides the rule engine that's on the standard, this rule engine also supports uh, forwarding data to uh, other brokers such as Kafka and also persisting data to databases such as MySQL. And we offer 24 seven technical support. And if you need more than 100,000 connections or you have other special requirements, oops, you're more than welcome to contact us and we'll set you up with the unlimited plan. For the professional plan, you have a choice of your cloud platform, your region and connections. So you have a choice between hosting the, uh, the deployment on AWS, Azure or Google Cloud. Uh, then you can also choose your region. So uh, the region will depend actually on the, the platform that you choose, the cloud platform. And then you, you choose the, the amount of connections that you want. Um, so depending upon uh, your needs. 
We have a rule engine that allows you to process messages in real time. So all plans support a rule engine that allows you to modify and filter the messages in real time. Uh, you can stream messages to external HTTP endpoints, and you can also stream messages to other MQTT brokers. With the professional and unlimited plan, in addition to that, you're able to persist messages to databases such as MySQL, MongoDB, et cetera. And you can also stream messages to other message servers such as Kafka. For security, authentication, and authorization, we have many different um, ways you can uh, to provide security. For authentication, you can authenticate the clients using username, password, HTTP, LDAP, or you can uh, authenticate through external databases such as Redis, MySQL, et cetera. We have support for certificates for SSL and TLS. And for authorization, you have fine granularity of control as to what you are allowed the clients to do and not do. So for instance, you can specify um, that a specific client may not publish to specific uh, topics, or in other words, oops, um, you may allow them to only uh, publish or subscribe to specific topics. So you can use wildcards or you can specify specific topics as to what a client is allowed or not allowed to do. So you have very, very fine granularity of control over what the clients can do on the network. We have a dashboard for performance monitoring. So you can see the number of messages per second uh, at any given moment, the number of connections, subscriptions, et cetera. And in addition, we have different performance uh, packet data, um, statistics that you can see over an hour a day, seven days a month, et cetera. In the dashboard, you can also view clients and sub subscriptions. So you can see which clients are online and connected, and you can also see their subscription that subscriptions as to what topics they are subscribing to. In addition, on the dashboard, we have a very nice tool that allows you to create web uh, WebSocket-based clients. So you can create very quickly uh, clients to monitor subscription, uh, monitor topics, and you can also publish data to topics. So this is a very nice tool for testing. Uh, we have full sol IoT solutions for edge to cloud. So if you're planning on using an edge gateway in your IoT design, we have support for a message broker and streaming analytics on the edge. And also besides having the uh, message broker and streaming analytics in the cloud. And of course you can connect between the two. So we have full um, uh, edge to cloud support. In addition, I wanna point out that we have support for non MQTT protocols. So if you have products that are using Modbus or OPC UA, you can, or other PLC type uh, products, you can bring data from those uh, products into your IoT solution. So now I'll talk about uh, MQTT protocol advantages. So the MQ, MQTT is great for the internet of things. It's based on a publish subscribe model. So there's decoupling between the publishers and subscribers. So the publishers do not know, need to know who the subscribers are and vice versa. And publishers publish to topics in sort of a folder-based format. Uh, and subscribers subscribe to topics or uh, they can also subscribe to multiple topics uh, using wildcards. Uh, it's uh, MQT, MQTT is lightweight. It's designed for devices with limited hardware. Uh, the overhead is in bytes. It, it provides reliable message delivery over unreliable networks. So clients can request a persisted session so they don't lose data when they're offline. So for instance, if a client connects with a clear session equal to false, then the broker will save that, those messages for that client and deliver those messages when they come back online or reconnect. It has support for retained messages. So if a client 
publishes a message with the retain flag equal to true, then the broker will save that latest message for every topic. So when subsequent clients subscribe to that topic, they will immediately be get delivered that uh, latest message, regardless of if the publisher is offline or online. MQTT has a quality of service with guaranteed delivery. There's a will message where if a client goes offline, say for an abnormal reason, such as losing power, then a notification message will be sent to subscribers that subscribe to that message. There's a keep alive mechanism. So um, each client has a keep alive value associated with it, such that if it does not respond to the broker, such as publishing messages that are a ping um, within that keep alive time, then the broker considers that client offline or disconnected. So EMQX has full support for MQTT. We're 100% compatible with versions three, all the versions of the MQTT standard, the three and five. We have full support for all the quality of services. So for instance, quality of service zero, which means at most delivery or it's not guaranteed. Quality of service one, which means at least once delivery, but there may be duplicates and quali quality of service two, which means exactly one delivery. So MQTT has many applications. Um, this is just some examples. So for instance, big data and IoT, smart city, oil and gas, connected vehicle. I mean, it's really unlimited possibilities and use cases, but these are just some examples. So here's how you can get started using EMQX Cloud and get your free trial. And the one thing I wanna point out is you do not need a credit card. I could, I'll repeat, you do not need a credit card. So the first thing you do is you go to emqx.com and click free, uh, try free. And then here you can try all of our products, but the one I'll focus on today is cloud. So you select cloud and then you enter your email and password. And again, I just want to remind you, you don't need a credit card. Uh, then you sign in and then you can choose your plan, either standard or professional. So the standard uh, plan, you uh, the trial length is 30 days. For the professional, it's 14 days. So you choose the one you want. Uh, then for the professional, you can choose uh, your cloud platform that you want. Uh, I believe standard only runs on AWS, but for uh, professional, you can choose uh, AWS, Azure, or Google. Then you choose the region that you want. And for the trial plan, you have to choose the lowest number of connections. So after agreeing to the license term, uh, it takes about 10 minutes for the, uh, for the deployment to spin up on a platform. But after it uh, changes to the running state, then you're ready to go. So um, the first thing you do when you click on your deployment is you'll come here to the overview screen that tells you that, okay, it's a professional, um, the deployment name. And the most, what's really important here is the broker IP address and the, uh, the ports, because all the, any client that wants to connect to this broker has to have this information, the connection address and the ports. So really the only thing you have to do is just add some users. So um, if you click on authentication, then here is where you can add users. So just for testing, you can add a couple of users, um, one for publishing maybe and one for subscribing to topics. Uh, then you can uh, click the online test. And this allows you to enter in um, some WebSocket-based clients. So you can enter a couple of test clients. Um, what's nice about the web uh, the, the dashboard tool is it already knows and fills in for you the host address and port, so you don't have to worry about that. Then you enter a username password, and the only requirement is the username password has to agree with what you entered in the previous step. Uh, so you can so each every time you want to enter a new uh, client, just hit new connection. And then basically the next step is just to, to subscribe to a topic and then publish to that same topic. And here's where you can enter the message. And then you'll see that the, um, the subscribing client received the topic that was being published. So 
that's basically it. So then you're up and running with a, a quite high performance uh, message broker. So the next thing I want to talk about is the demo. And I want to first talk about the demo setup. So what I have is I have uh, oops, EMQX Cloud uh, running on AWS, the professional deployment. Uh, I also have a virtual Linux machine also running in AWS with a VPC peering connection between the two so that the EMQX Cloud can talk uh, to the Linux machine. And it's important to note that in order to get this set up to work, uh, there's a couple of things you have to set up in a dashboard. First is you have to set up the peering connection, and that's so that the cloud and, the, for instance, the Linux machine can talk to each other. But you also have to uh, tell EMQX Cloud where MySQL and Kafka are. So uh, the way you do that is to define a resource that points to the Kafka broker and another resource, resource that points to the MySQL database. So the Kafka broker and the MySQL database is what you have to set up. So then down here beside me, I have an IoT sensor that subscribes to a topic, uh, sorry, uh, publishes to a topic called Sensor One Data and subscribes to a topic called Sensor One Alarm in order to turn on its little alarm here. And then on my laptop, I have a program called M MQTTX, which allows me to create MQTT clients um, I can also create clients up here in the, in the dashboard directly. And finally, I have an SSH connection from the PC to the Linux machine that allows me to see the data in MySQL and Kafka. So a little bit about the sensor. It's running a microcontroller called NodeMCU with 128K of RAM, four megabytes of flash. It has a real temperature sensor an LED that's meant to act as the alarm and a button. And it's um, listening on a topic called sensor one alarm uh, in order to know whether to turn on or off the alarm. And it's publishing its data to a topic called sensor one data. Um, and the, these are the top, these are the, the variables in the, in the um, topic. So it's got the real temperature sensor uh, data. It's got the alarm status whether the button is pressed or released. And the one problem with real sensors is if I wanna make the temperature go really high or really low, then I have to either stick it in an oven or a freezer and that can be quite inconvenient. So I have a potentiometer here that, that um, sends a number from zero to 1023 to the microcontroller. And then that's the, the number. But with that number, I can scale it to whatever I want, any min max that I want, and I can also call it whatever I want. So I can say that that number represents temperature. I can say it represents weight, level, speed, whatever I want. So it's quite a nice uh, test setup. And then also I have some rules uh, defined in the rule engine. And one rule forwards the data to MySQL, persists the data to MySQL. The other rule forwards the data to Kafka. And the other thing these rules do is they calculate missing values. So if I go back to my sensor, I can see that the simulated temperature is only in degrees Celsius. So maybe I want to pro, um, have a, also a Fahrenheit calculation. So I can calculate that on the fly. And also I have another rule that monitors the temperature and sets the alarm if it's over 50. And it does that by republishing a command to a different topic the sensor one alarm topic, which uh, the, the IoT device then subscribes to. There's another rule for handling the button event. So in this case, if I press start, if I press the button, it sends a start command to, the, um, to a couple of different machines, just to two different topics. And then finally, I have a rule that detects if the sensor is online or offline. So I always know the connection status of the sensor, whether it's disconnected or connected. And then uh, the last thing I'll show is I'll sh I want to show the difference between a clean session and a persisted session. 
so I have two clients, one client with um, the clean session set to true and the other client with the clean session set to false. And that's interpreted as a persistent session. So with the, with the sensor disconnected, both of, these both of these clients will connect to the broker. They will subscribe to the topic, uh, to the sensor data, and then they will disconnect. And then after they disconnect, the sensor will come online, uh, publish its data, and then disconnect. And what's important to note is that for the persisted client, the broker maintains a list of all of the, the topics that it has subscribed to. So it constantly is saving the message data for that client and will deliver it to it when it connects, reconnects. So after the sensor is disconnected, then the two clients will reconnect. And it's worth noting that the clean, uh, the client with the clean session actually has to resubscribe. So after they reconnect, you'll see that the, the client with the persisted session will receive all of the data that um, uh, it, it missed while it was disconnected. And the client with the clean session will either receive one message or no messages, depending upon how the message was published. If, the, if it was published with the retain flag equal to false, then the client will not receive anything. If it was published with the retain flag equal to true, then uh, the client will receive the last message that was published to the topic. And that's, you can see that these are the same. And for demo purposes, um, the sensor is publishing its data to this topic with the retained value equal to false. And it's also publishing exact same data to a topic called retain, which means that the retain flag is true. So now we can go to our demo. So here I'm, I'm in the, uh, the cloud console at, at the overview uh, part. So this is where you would come to when you first uh, click on your deployment. You can see I'm running professional. Um, this is the important connection address and the ports. So all the clients need this information. Uh, further down, this is where you set up your certificates for TLS and SSL. Also on this page is where you set up your VPC peering connections. So I have one set up for the Linux machine. And finally, if you want to test out the REST APIs, here's the API endpoint. And then uh, with the username password for the API, and you can generate new username passwords here. So now let's go see what clients are connected to our system. So if we come up here uh, to the clients, we can see we have a couple of clients and a sensor. And down here, we can see that uh, the clients are subscribing to the different sensor data. For instance, this is the data that uh, is coming directly from the sensor. Uh, this is the last will. So if the sensor goes offline, say because of loss of power, then this will this uh, a message will be uh, published to this topic. And the rest of these come from the rules. So there's a rule that sets the alarm and uh, uh, the one that detects the, the status. So if we go over here, we can see our little sensor. And every time the light blinks, it's when it's publishing its data. So then we can come down here to one of the clients that's subscribing to the data. So you can see this is the real temperature sensor that shows the temperature where I'm sitting. And then this is the simulation input. And this is what all the rules will respond to is the simulation. So if I turn the simulated value uh, so that the simulated temp C is above 50 degrees here, you can see it's 74. And that will cause the alarm to turn on. And also, if I look over here, this client is subscribing to all of these, uh, these topics that we discussed. So you can see that there is a, an alarm uh, that was generated to turn on the alarm. And if I turn the temperature down, 
you can see that the alarm is off. And sure enough, if I go back here, the light is off. So these were determined from the rules. So it was the rules that, that turned on and off the alarm. So the other thing we can look at is the machine commands, and that's because of the button pressed. So if I go back here and look at the button pressed, so if I press the button, you'll see it shows press. And then the other rule that's monitoring that fires off a couple of start commands to, um, in this case, a couple of different machines. The other thing, so the other thing we can look at is the last will and the status. So if I disconnect power at the right moment, you'll notice that the sensor has a keep alive value of 11 seconds. So if 11 seconds go by and it hasn't um, sent a ping or published data in which it, ha it won't because it's, uh, the power is disconnected, then what happens is it sends out, first of all, a, a last will. So this was sent because the sensor lost power. And this was sent because of the rule that's monitoring the connection and disconnection status. So those were some of the rules. Um, and now we can, let me turn power back on. And we can go back and look at some of the, okay, this was the overview. We can also look at authentication. So um, there's various ways that clients can authenticate. This, uh, this way is through username, password. If you want, uh, which is probably mostly for tests, but in production, if you want auth uh, clients to authenticate through um, like databases, then what you can do is you can submit a ticket to us through up here, and we will set you up with authenticating through other databases. But for right now in my demo, I'm just using the username password, which you can enter one by one, or you can import. So you can import a CSV file, and I'll show you the actual file that I used. So this is the file that I use. It's, it's, it's just a CSV file with username password. So Quite, quite simple. Uh, so what happens if a user who is not allowed tries to log in? So I have no login, this, this no login client, which is not in the username password list. If they try to log in, then they get uh, refused by the broker. So they're not allowed to log in. On the ACL, this is where you can define exactly um, what clients are allowed or not allowed to do. So you can specify uh, whether you want them, you allow them to publish, subscribe, or both publish and subscribe. So, uh, or you can specify a lie or um, deny. So what we're saying here is that uh, client 15 is uh, only allowed to publish on sensor one data. Uh, so they can't do anything else. Or you can say that, uh, for instance, this client here, deny two, is not allowed to, to subscribe on anything with any sensor, any data from any sensor. So if we go to this client here, deny, and they can connect. But if they try to subscribe to sensor one data, then they will be denied because it was uh, not in the, uh, because they were specified as not being able to subscribe to this topic. But if we try to subscribe to another topic, then that is okay. So they're allowed to subscribe to this topic, but they're not allowed to subscribe to the data topic. Um, we have a, the rule engine is where all the rules were defined. And I want to come back to that because I want to show you um, how to create different rules. Um, this, this is also where you set up your resources. So you need a resource to point to Kafka and a resource to point to MySQL. 
uh, monitor we've already seen. That's where you monitor the clients. Um, metrics. We have uh, different metrics that you can see over a one hour time frame, one day, seven days, a month, a year, to show the, the data going across the network. We have different logs. So if there were logs, they would appear here. Alerts. So these are kind of major errors. Uh, usually, like for instance, if a resource goes down. So when I was playing with the Linux machine and took down the, uh, the uh, MySQL uh, database, for instance, then it, it generated an error, an error. And you can have those errors emailed to you or sent to you versus, over Slack. And then we have a very nice online tool that allows you to generate clients. So here's a client that's been monitoring all those topics that we've seen before, but we can also have another client that, let me show you how to add a client. So it's very easy. Notice the, the broker address and the port was already filled in. So I just have to enter in a username, password, uh, sensor data. So now I have my, my client, so I can now subscribe to the data. So now you can see it's, it's receiving all the data that the sensor is publishing. So it's a very nice way to, um, easily test your system. So now, let's see. So now look, we've looked at all the other rules. Let's look at the, we have a rule that forwards the data to Kafka. So let's go look at that. Uh, and I also wanted to show that you can, you can disable the rules so you can turn them on and off. So let's go to look at MySQL. So if I select, keep selecting the table, you can see that this number increases. So it's, it's constantly updating the, the database. Same with Kafka, oops, hello. So if we wait, I can press the button. So you can see that the data is always constantly being streamed to both MySQL and Kafka. Uh, so now let's look at the rules more closely. So if we look at the rule, for instance, that uh, forwards the data to MySQL, here, here's the, what the rules look like. They all have the, basically the same format. So first of all, you, uh, you write a SQL type syntax. So this rule is, is looking at every message coming into sensor one data. And, uh, and from that topic, it's selecting the topics that we're interested in, such as the client ID, the temperature, uh, and it's also calculating a value. So if there's missing data, we can also calculate that. So there's no where clause. So that means that every, it's forwarding uh, the data to the, these actions with every message. So with every message, it's also, it's taking the data from the select clause and performing the action. So in this case, the action is um, sending the data to MySQL. Uh, so the resource points to the database and here we can pick the table. And basically it's just put, putting in the values into the table. So the values from the select are here. So that was to MySQL. Uh, the rule to Kafka is very similar. Again, it's looking at every message published to sensor one data, picking the values that we want. And it's important to note that um, the actual mes message data is wrapped inside of a JSON payload object. So if you want to pick out 
like the temperature is a particular value from the payload uh, from the topic, you have to um, use the pay JSON payload dot notation to get it. Again, we're calculating a value and there's no where clause. So we're always sending the data to the action. Or in other words, we're always publishing data to Kafka. Uh, we're publishing all the messages to Kafka. And here we choose the Kafka topic. And then it uses a template type structure. So this is a key value pair. This is text. This is the value from the select text, the value from the select. So quite, um, quite straightforward and not too bad to create these rules. Um, the alarm. Um, here we have a where clause. So again, it, pick, it evaluates every um, message from the topic from sensor one data. Then it, it um, chooses the, the uh, data that we want. And then in, in addition, we can create our own data alarm command that is on if the temperature is above 50, off is, if it's below 50. And the difference here is now we have a where clause. So the where clause acts as a filter. Um, so it only will forward the data to the, um, to the action if this is true. So if the alarm status is the same as uh, our new command, it's not going to do anything because we don't want to keep sending it on all the time. We only want to send an on command when the alarm is off. So it's only going to fire when this evaluates to true. Uh, and then the action is just to republish to a different topic. Right. So I'll skip the button one because it's kind of, it's very similar, but the one I want to show you is the, the sensor connect disconnect because it's, it's quite f powerful. The broker has some system events, events that it, um, uh, that it publishes uh, to automatically. So when a client connects and disconnects, it's, it sends out these events. So I have a where clause where I'm only interested in the sensor, but if you delete the where clause, then this simple little rule will give you the status of every client in your network, all millions of them. So even with just this simple rule, and what I'm doing down here is just publishing to a different topic and I hard coded this to one, but if instead of a uh, hard coded one, you use a variable, then you have a very uh, nice way of telling what all your clients, if the state of all your clients, whether they're connected or disconnected. So um, let's see, I wanna show how to create a rule. So if we notice that down here in our data, there's a value called uh, speed. So we have a speed value here. So let's create a rule that detects if someone is speeding. So first of all, we say new rule and then we'll call it detect speeding. And then one very, very nice feature is this SQL test. So you can test the rules before um, to see how they work. So one convenient thing to do is to just, just to look and see what's uh, produced is if we select everything and press, press SQL test, you'll see what's, uh, what's available, what fields are available to you. So besides the actual topic data, there's other metadata like client ID, uh, the node, the peer host, quality of service, the topic. And here's where you can see that the actual payload is wrapped inside of this payload variable. So that's why if you want to access the variables here, you have to reference the payload uh, uh, variable. So that's, so just seeing what, what uh, fields you have available is quite convenient. So what we will do is we will come over here and cheat. Let me go to my... So if I paste it in here, so what this rule is going to do 
is it's going to pick out the our speed and uh, you can assign an alias. So now I don't have to keep once I do, once I make this an alias, I don't keep I don't keep having to refer to the payload anymore. I can just refer to speed. So I pick the speed, the username, and now I decide if um, if the speed is over 100, it's speeding. If it's under 100, it's driving normal. And since there's no where clause, it's just always going to uh, send this to the action. So um, the action that we want is here. Uh, let me see. Let me do one step first. Before I do the action, I actually would like to test it. So I'll show you how to test it. If you put a dummy payload here, let me just make sure it's correct. So what happens when you press test is it will send this payload to this topic. And the thing to know that this topic has to match the topic that the SQL is going to be looking at. So it's going to be looking at sensor one data. So we have to change it to sensor one data. So as soon as we press test, it sends this dummy payload to our SQL rule and it evaluates that. And this is what we will send to the action. So sure enough, the speed is over 100. It says speeding. We can change the value to under 100. Press test. And now it, it says driving normal. So we're, we've tested our SQL. We're happy with it. And now we can create our action. And it's important to know that what the action sees is this. So anything you want to see in the action, you have to specify it in the select clause, select clause or else it won't work according, the action won't see it. So we add an action. So what we want to do is just republish to a topic. So I say republish and we want it to be sensor one uh, speed. And then we fill in our payload template, which again, I'm going to cheat. Come back here. So the username is a variable, the speed is a variable, and the speed status is a variable, which came from the select. But everything else is just test. So we hit confirm. And then let me move my zoom controls so they're not in the way. Hit create. And now we can see our rule has been created called detect speeding. So we can test that. So if we come up here, we can, I'll zoom in so you can see it. If I now subscribe to sensor one speed, and now, You can see as the speed changes, it goes from driving normal to speeding. So our rule is working. And now the last thing I wanted to show was this, the difference between a clean session and a persistent session. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect the sensor and then let me uh, reset this because this this will show how many, how many, how much data is being sent, how many messages are being sent. So, so the sensor is now disconnected. So I have a clean client. Let me make it a little bit bigger. I have a clean client, and that has the clean session flag set to true. And I have a persistent client with the clean session set to false. So with the sensor off, I'm going to have both of these connect. So both clients are connected and I'm gonna have them subscribe to the sensor one data topic. 
So remember the sensor is not publishing data, so they won't receive any data. So now that they're, they've connected, they've subscribed to the topic, and now I will have them disconnect. And the first thing you notice is the, the client with the clean session, there's no record here of him ever subscribing to the topic, but over here it's retained. And that's because if I look at the broker, I can see that the clean, the persisted client, even though it's disconnected, it, it's, it's disconnected, but still listed. And hopefully, let me move the zoom controls. Way down here, you can see that um, it still maintains the persisted client as subscribing to the sensor one data. So the broker will save the data that's meant for that client. So if I come back over here, um, so now I want to see, they are uh, disconnected, disconnected. So now I plug back in the client or the sensor, I mean. So if we come back over here, so I'm waiting for it to come online. And when it comes online, you'll see it start to publish data and you'll see that this starts counting, hopefully. Okay, so now it, now the sensor's online and it's starting to publish its data and the other clients are actually offline. So let me let it publish just a couple more. Good. So now if we come over here, the, the sensor is disconnected. So it, it has only published four um, topic, four messages. So if now with the sensor off, we reconnect. And you can see right away, the client with the persist, persistent session has received all of those messages, but the clean client has not received any messages. And that's because this data topic, uh, the messages to the data topic were published with retain flag equal to false. So if I make, uh, it, the sensor also publishes to the retain topic with the retain flag equal to true. So you can see that it receives one message, which was the last message uh, that was published to that topic. So, um, so you can see how with persisted sessions, you don't lose any data even when you're offline. So that's the end of my demo. So let me go back to the slides. Um, so in summary, EMX, EMQX Cloud is a high performance, high capacity, low latency, fully managed IoT platform that is fast and easy to deploy. So sign up for your free trial today. And you're welcome to join our EMQX community. Um, we have channels on Slack and GitHub and an open forum where you can um, chat with our experts and other members of the community. So with that, it's time for questions and answers. Let's see, we have one question. It says, how do you handle report by exception or publish only on change? Um, can you expand? I'm not sure what uh, you mean, only if the data changes? So if, if I understand the question correctly, you can put in the where clause if um, you can create rules to publish depending upon if data changes or not. Hi, Carrie. There are some questions yeah. in the chatting box. Ah, okay. Uh, yes, the, uh, maybe someone in the cloud team can. We have one question about does EMQX support timescale DB? Uh, and yes, I believe it does. If someone on the cloud team can correct. There's a new question in the QA box, Carrie. Let's see. Yeah. Uh, let's see, can EMQX cloud service send data to Kafka through hosted by AWS? Uh, yeah, because that, that's the setup I have. I have Kafka on AWS. 
And another question in chatting box. Let's see. Aha, okay. Um, how can I use my database to do the authentication? So um, actually you would, you would contact us and we would set that up for you because the idea with cloud is that um, you don't have to do all of the, the setup. Uh, we can do the setup for you. And maybe that's all the questions. Yeah, that's all I see. Let me check. Okay, so. Uh, do, you, do you want to talk a little bit about the community? Yes, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> okay. Give me a little time to introduce our EMQX community and all of you can uh, join our Slack channel or discuss some issues or uh, your pro your the, the the usage problems in the GitHub forum. So thanks, Carrie, and thank you all you attending. Thank you very much. Okay, and uh, we will. Uh, send the recording in the follow-up email. And if you have any other questions, feel free to contact us in our Slack channel or GitHub. So thank you for your interest. Bye-bye, everyone.